Hello everybody, today I'm at Aiken State Park and that is in Windsor, South Carolina. The reason it's named Aiken State Park is because it was named after Aiken County. And this right here, this particular location is one of my most favorite locations in the park, but we will see it a little bit later. But I figured what better place to start the video at Aiken State Park than one of my favorite locations at Aiken State Park. So you'll be hearing about that a little bit later. I was gonna get mom in the beginning of this video, but she's already hightailed it back to the car yet again. So, it's just me starting it out, but she'll be in the end of the video. But anyway, you can come along and I hope you enjoy. I do have my original vehicle today. My dear sweet on boy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm at the kiosk for Aiken State Park, and this is the visitor information. It says, welcome. The slow, meandering black water of the South Fork Edisto River makes Aiken State Park a unique visitor destination. The park was one of the 16 developed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s and 1940s. The park protects four spring-fed lakes, a river swamp, a bottomland hardwood forest, and a dry sandhill forest. The diverse habitats allow for a variety of plant and wildlife species to thrive in the park while also offering visitors exceptional educational and recreational activities. Visitors can take a leisurely 1.7 mile canoe trip down the meandering Edisto River and then picnic at one of the many covered shelters. The park also offers a three mile hiking trail, fishing, camping, and non-motorized boat and canoe rentals. Then I always like to point out the top five things to do. So number one is rent a canoe and take a float down a 1.7 mile stretch of the Edisto River. Two, take a hike on the Jungle Trail or try the Orienting Course. Number three, fish in one of the Aiken State Park's four lakes and catch bream, bass, and catfish. Number four, drink from one of the two artesian fountains found in the park. And number five, take a dip and cool off in the park's swimming area, and that's open seasonally. So whenever this park was being built, they actually had two CCC groups that built this park. So this wayside talks about the men who built this park. It says, among the programs created to rescue America from the Great Depression, the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, gave young men the opportunity to build roads and dams, plant trees, and construct public recreation areas, including many South Carolina state parks. In military-inspired units, CCC men worked hard for paychecks sent home to their families. After 867 acres were donated in 1934, Aiken became the second state park acquired in South Carolina. Based in nearby Montmorency, CCC Company 1438 began the project. When they were shipped to another assignment, Company 4470 arrived to finish developing the park. And so this shows the two groups. So this was the first group. It said Company 1438, the first CCC group to work on this park, included a baseball team in the lower left, cooks in the white hats, and doctors in the white coats. Military influence is evident in other uniforms. And in this one, it says, like most of 1930s America, the CCC was segregated, led by white commanding officers. The African American Company 4470 completed the construction of this state park. And I'm not gonna walk the nature trail, but I'll show you the sign for it. So this is the jungle trail, and it says that some of it may be flooded right now due to recent rain.
And so this is where you get on the trail at. And it says foot traffic only. You cannot bring your bicycle, your horse, or your motorized vehicle on it. And that's how that looks starting out. And they got the trail markers up there. So this over here is one of the lakes they have here. And this is the one they actually have the swimming area in, in the warmer months. So it should be opening pretty soon because it's already May 2nd, 2022 now. I had to think of what day it was. Yours was flying by. And from here, you can see the park office. It's over there. And I'm getting ready to head over there myself anyway. But in this one over here, it's, as you can see, it's got picnic areas and the bathrooms over there and the playgrounds over there. I think frogs. Sounds like frogs. Maybe crickets. Did you see it there? But anyway, that is the mountain laurel there. That was the main purpose of coming today, hoping that it was still in bloom here. So here's another wayside and it talks about Aiken State Natural Area, which I think now they just call everything state parks. But it's separate camps equal goals. And it says, in order to ease the burden of the Great Depression, President Fres Franklin D. Roosevelt established a CCC in 1933 to employ young men in community service actions. The CCC enlisted African-American men but created segregated camps due to national race relations. While many communities protested the establishment of black camps, Aiken had a few objections about the segre segregated workforce at Aiken State Park, now Aiken State Natural Area. After white CCC workers at Aiken cleared roads and handled other preliminary work, black CCC workers built picnic shelters and other essential structures. Unlike other states, South Carolina employed a significant number of black enrollees, eventually comprising 33% of the CCC workforce. So here's a picture of the men that helped build this park. And that says members of company 4470 built picnic shelters and other buildings at Aiken State Park. And this says, after working hard, CCC company 4470 ate and relaxed in the camp's mess hall. And that says CCC company 4470 was stationed in Montmorsini, South Carolina while working at Aiken State Park. And as part of their training, CCC workers attended school, which helped to increase literacy throughout the country. 
And so this is the park office and that's the lake we were just at. I love the stonework on that building out there. That is so pretty. So let me see if I can get myself down this hill. So I can get to the mountain laurel. I see it. Bad thing is, if we get down, I got to get back up. <laughs> Now that's just amazing that still looks so good all these years later I'm so happy this is still blooming because I was like, oh my lord, I'm probably going to miss it. But it's still here. And this is the mountain laurel. This is like also what you saw in my pond set video and also my Camilla Gardens video. The next thing we'll be coming up on is the campground and they have 25 standard campsites with electrical service and water as well as access to a shower house and there are three rustic tent sites available for tent camping so if you're into that kind of lifestyle feel free to contact the park or go on SouthCarolinaParks.com, then go to Aiken so you can make a reservation. Unfortunately, they do not have any cabins or villas at this park, but if you've got an RV or a camper or anything else, bring it on.
There's not too many people in the campground today. And they have a lot of pine trees in theirs. Yep, it is there. It's usually full whenever we come. We have a lot of people out there. Not today. So that's their beautiful spillway they have here. I've always kind of been fascinated by this one because I just love the design of it. So this is picturesque and pressurized. Set apart from the main part, this picnic area was constructed in the 1930s by men of the CCC who appreciated its scenic location with its natural construction materials and simple lines. The Fish Lake Shelter is a classic CCC building and one reason the area remains popular with families and fishermen. Another reason for this site's popularity is the four acre lake fed by artesian wells. These naturally occurring underground water sources are under sufficient pressure to maintain a constant flow of water. In addition to the lake, artesian water gushes up through fountains located throughout the park. So if we shall turn back time right there, there's a small child at one of them. All right, there's the most popular one they have on the park. And that shows the shelter back in the day and then it shows a local fisherman right there and that shows the fish lake shelter as it looks today which probably still looks the same way it did back then it's so pretty out here with all the lily pads and i have a fascination with lily pads i like lily pads and water lilies uh, that's, that's up there with the um, azaleas and tulips for me. Oh, 
I'm thinking that might possibly be some wild blueberries there. At least it looks like the blueberries at the house. Even though ours are not low down to the ground like that, we actually have bushes. You know, I never realized until I looked at that picture, but this is the artesian well. It's been here the whole time, and I did not realize it. How shameful. And they do have a bathroom back here too. So that's always convenient to know where they're all located. That's the back side of the shelter. There's actually somebody in there working right now, so I don't want to bother them. They got the laptop and everything in there. Now it's not moving. Maybe that's why I never realized that was the artesian well. But now I know. And if you're watching the video and you didn't know, now you know too. <laughs> So there's the spillway. I just love this one. I think it's so pretty. It just flows right on down into the woods. So now I'm back up here at the front of Fish Lake where the water lilies are actually blooming out right now. They're just so beautiful. They definitely have a place in my heart. Which if you ever watch my videos long enough, you'll figure out what I like and what I don't like. And I do really like water lilies. There's some pretty ones there. I don't know how good these are showing up on camera, but they are beautiful. But as you can see, you can understand why the CCC wanted this location to exist because it is just so peaceful here. It's so quiet. It's so nice. Everything's just so beautiful. I could go on and on. So I have found some more mountain laurel here. And this is over here at Fish Lake as well. And it turns out I didn't have to walk through all the bushes like I did a while ago to get where I was going because I could have waited till I got here, but it's okay. What's the fun in that if you don't go on adventures while you're doing these videos? I 
I just love this. I just love that it blooms here. Because we're nowhere near the mountains and it's blooming. It's just fascinating. I need some of this for my yard. But I looked online, the bushes are actually very expensive. So I just have to come to these parks and enjoy it. Yeah, that's, that is a beautiful plant. But if I don't leave from I'm not going to get anywhere else in this park today. So I shall say goodbye to this particular one. So as you keep on driving down the road, you're going to finally come to the sign that says Edisto River. So whenever you see the sign for the Edisto River, that means you can park in this little parking lot over here. And you'll see all these kayaks out here for rent. And you're in the right location. So anyway, as you can see, there's plenty of kayaks out here. Even though they have their canoe rental, so maybe it's a canoe. It's a something. And they even have a courtesy canoe cart return here after use. And this up here shows the canoe trail. And it says, explore the South Fork of the Edisto River. Out on the river, the world seems miles away. This float path takes you through a remote stretch of the Edisto River. A slow-moving current meanders past mossy cypress and Tula, Tulupo Swamp. Overhead, the tree canopy forms a tunnel of branches. Listen for the echo and knocks of red-headed woodpeckers. Watch for Sinosa's banded water snakes or great blue herons fishing near the banks. The park keeps this canoe path clear, but the water level varies due to rainfall. When the river is low, you might dodge submerged tree trunks or strainers. A marker at the launch dock shows the water level today. So. We shall go on down there and look at it. And I do have to say, I'm quite fond of South Carolina State Parks. This is one of my number top 10 locations in a park because whenever you see the view back here you'll understand why it is simply breathtaking I mean, isn't this just oh, so peaceful looking? And you can see the sign over there. It says canoe trail. This is just glorious right here. And according to that, it looks like the river is nine foot right now just in that location right there. So that's a steep um, drop off from where we're at. So then as you walk back up the ramp from the canoe launch, kayak launch, whatever you would like to call it,
you will come up to the most famous artesian well they have here. <laughs> and I still cannot believe that I did not know where the other one was at until today. But as they say, you live and you learn. And the most depressing part about that whole thing is I've been coming here for years. Anyway, this is the famous one that everybody knows about. This is probably the most photographed one here. And a little, a little hot out here today, so that water feels really good gushing down on my feet. And this one has much better water pressure on it, as you can tell as well. scared to do that and I did taste the water one time at least State Park so I can honestly say that I have tasted water out of the artesian well because that was something on the scavenger hunt a couple of years ago so I did do that but I didn't like how it tasted so as you come up to this you're gonna think, oh, I'm done with the park. There's nothing else to see. That's it. And I thought that for many years myself. You know, you come up to the stop sign where the road was at and you turn to the left or to the right, depending on where you live at. But what you wanna do, you wanna turn to the left you're going to pass by the nice ranger house right there. And I, I have to say, they've got one of the better looking ones in the state park service. So anyway, here's the stop, stop sign coming back to the road. You're like, oh, I'm done. I'm done. No, you're not. Let me raise it back through the roof. What you want to do, you want to come across the road over here. Hold on a second. I didn't know she closed her sunroof back. <laughs> with that you're on cabin road
This so over here, as you saw whenever we were driving up, is a piece of state park history. And I do love state park history. I just think it's fascinating. So this is a site of hard work and peaceful relaxation. The men of the CCC built three cabins here in 1938 and 1939. Originally called fisherman cabins, these rustic accommodations hosted countless relaxing getaways. On April 6, 1967, two of the shacks were destroyed when the Windsor Forest Fire burned 6,350 acres in Aiken County, including 320 acres of the park. The 12-acre spring-fed Watson's Pond, now called Cabin Lake, is also the work of the CCC. It provides excellent habitat for largemouth bass and many bird species. So that right there shows how it looked back in the day. And this is whenever families used to come and visit. I don't know how good they're showing up. But there they are. And then it says the CCC also built a new spillway and constructed Cabin Lake Dam near the Edisto River. So you can see that that was Aiken Cabin 1 right there, according to the sign up there on it anyway. And this would have been the front of it, but now it's all boarded up. I kind of wish it wasn't because I'd love to go in there and just see the history, but obviously I can't. But look at that old window up there. That is just so unique. You don't really see window panes like that anymore. And then there's a path down there to the river. And it's just flowing right on down. And this is what you would have seen if you had walked up from the river back in the day. Let me see how far I can walk because it is snake season. And I'm more afraid of a snake than one I am an alligator, as crazy as that sounds. But I can see an alligator, I can't see the snakes. Not very well anyway. But that's the river and that's as close as I'm getting because it looks boggy. And that would be the cabin. So now I'm gonna walk around the rest of the cabin. They have a beautiful old fireplace over here as well. And I'm gonna tell you something. Those guys in the CCC, they knew what they were doing. They were highly skilled. And you know, I keep saying, but you don't see stuff like that today. And that's, that's just truly remarkable. Because, you know, in today's society, we're so more advanced than what they were back then, but then they did stuff that's greater than anything that can be done today. electricity back then because that's an electrical meter so it was in better shape we could just move on in have a little beautiful thing beside the river i don't know how bad it looks inside but if they would fix it up i'd stay there wouldn't you it depends well it depends on how it looks inside but it's a beautiful area and it's so yeah. secluded back here also yeah beautiful 
So anyway, once you leave the cabin area, you can walk back in the other direction. And that takes you to Cabin Lake up here. As you can see, they also have boats over here that you can rent. And if you look over there, you can see the cabin through the woods. You know, oh, it is recording, okay. So I'm pretty sure that would have been a pathway right there as well. If you keep on walking down this path, it's not that far. You can actually get to the dam that I was talking about a few seconds ago. Might have been a minute or two ago at this point, who knows. And that's another good view of the Edisto right there. It's really nice. And it's actually probably what you see from the cabin view, if you want to know the truth. Ooh, there's some more mountain world there. I was not expecting that. So beautiful. And there it is. It's the spillway for this park. Damn, whatever you'd like to call it. So pretty. I hope this thing holds up. It looks pretty sturdy. So. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's something, you know, you don't always know what exists, but it does exist. Oh, I see a little turtle down there, too. I don't know how good it's showing up anyway. Oh, it's moving its little legs. Is it gonna jump in?
Apparently not. It must have just been stretching. Now she'll cross back across this. You can call it a moat. You're like, oh. Thank God there's no alligators here because I might just fall on over. I don't know. I just love that. And this is also a thing I did not know existed for a very long time because I did not know about this side of the road. And that's just shameful to say. But it is what it is, as they say. And there's that turtle. I don't know if he's going to show up or not. He's so cute. Oh, he's just moving. There's one final view of that beautiful, beautiful piece of history. And then I got to bring myself back up these stairs. And that was not so bad at all right there. So. So this is my final thing to show about this park. This is where the canoes or kayaks come in from the other side. And to me, this is also beautiful down here. And this is still on the um, cabin lake side. Jesus. These mosquitoes are horrendous. I don't know if you can hear them on the video, but they are attacking. They're like savages. Oh. But anyway, this is the canoe takeout dock right here. So for all the fun of canoeing down the river, this is where you end up at. Right here in this beautiful, beautiful section of the park. So whenever you first start getting down the cabin road, cabin lake, whatever it's called, I gotta look at the sign. But anyway, you come out here and it looks like it's been burnt. It's like, oh, what's happened out here? But anyway, it says, bring him back, longleaf pine habitat. Can a tree take you back in time? Open forests of longleaf pines once covered this region. Fox squirrels devoured the overside seeds and red cockatiel woodpeckers made homes in the nest cavities. Workers harvested the wood to, sh to build ships and houses. As long leaf came down, fast growing slash pines took root. Slash pines are not part of the ecosystem here. So they start with a little talk down a talk. Sustain fewer native species. Beetles and ice storms damage slash pines, but the slow growing, stronger long leaf survive. South Carolina State Parks is restoring longleaf pines by setting controlled burns, planting seedlings, and removing slash pines. While we can't create recreate the past we can make a healthy future for plants animals and people so anyway right there is another historic photo and it says you can see a healthy forest in this photo of a 1938 family reunion at the park how does this compare to today and i'm pretty sure that was over there at fish lake where that was taken because see the bridge and everything and this says look and listen for fox squirrel turkey and bob white quail to return longleaf pine habitat here so that's what they're waiting on so anyway, they do prescribe burns here. So that's why it looks like this. It does not harm the forest at all. It's just, you know, it helps protect it in a way if you really want to know about it. Another place they do prescribe burns all the time is at Okie Finoki. And as you know, that's a very special place in my heart. So this is the part of Aiken State Park that has that. 
so as we wrap up the video for Aiken State Park, I do hope you enjoyed this part because this is a really, really, really good part. But anyway, I did not write cliff notes today because I did not know where I was coming this morning whenever I left home. My intended destination was having, um, what were they doing? Orangeburg. Well, it was, it was Edisto Memorial Gardens in Orangeburg, South Carolina. But anyway, they were throwing um, pesticides on all of the roses. So, it said do not enter, so I did not enter. So, I said, where better else can we go? So, we decided to come to Aiken because I was really hoping that the mountain laurel was still blooming. And it was. So, anyway, this is the Aiken County Visitor's Guide. And this tells about different places in Aiken County that you can visit. And, fortunately... It has the information in here about Aiken State Park. And that is Cabin Lake Lane. That's what it's called. So we can go ahead and correct that now. It's Cabin Lake Lane. Anyway. The information about Aiken State Park is... During the Great Depression in the early 1930s, an African-American detachment of the CCC built the park. Their work can still be seen in some of the remaining structures as well as interpretive signage throughout the park. The 1,067-acre park offers picnicking, biking, camping, fishing, boating, hiking, geocation, and a seasonal swimming area. The three-mile loop jungle trail is a great hike. A playground is on the park, too. Several geocaches are located on the park. For more information and locations of these caches, visit the official geocaching website. I think mosquitoes are trying to follow me, too. The park is a combination of a river swamp, bottomland, hardwood forest, and dry sand hill, longleaf pine forest. The park has four ponds on the property for recreational paddling and fishing which are fed by artesian springs. These naturally occurring underground water sources are under sufficient pressure to maintain a constant flow of water. In addition to the ponds, artesian water flows up through art two artesian wells on the park. Now I did see something that there is three, so I don't know if there's still three or if there's only two now, but I'm just impressed I finally found the second one. I cannot believe that I have been coming to this place for over 10 years now, and that is the first time I have ever saw that thing in action so <laughs> i actually thought it was like an old chimney or an old fireplace or something it's just like a bunch of rocks out there to me but i just happened to walk by and i'm like oh my god the water is flowing out of it that was terribly exciting for me so anyway it says small selection of souvenir items can be purchased in the park office firewood and fishing worms are also available for purchase pets are allowed in most outdoor areas provided they are kept on a leash no longer than six feet and anyway as i said before they do have camping here, so there's 25 campsites. They also have a primitive group camping, and that's on the bank of the South Fork of the Edisto River. And I actually think that's over there on the Cabin Lake side. If you want to know the truth, because there was something very primitive looking over there. And then, of course, you can also rent the canoe and the kayaks. So, how'd you enjoy your visit today? Mm -hmm. It was good. It's all on second artesian well that I've been looking for for years. I've heard of that and never saw it. And that, that's, that's just what I was saying. That's, I'm like, maybe it doesn't exist and there. It wasn't from my eyes the whole time. Anyway, other than that, I do hope that you enjoyed this park because this is one of the more beautiful parks that they have in the state of South Carolina. And I don't think that it gets the recognition that it needs because there's a lot of times we come here, there's hardly nobody here. And I don't ever want it to get overflowing where I can't enjoy it myself, but I do wish more people would come and see it. So with that, we're done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. Got anything to say? Bye. She's saying bye because she's, she's got to go. But anyway, I'll wrap it up. So if you did watch, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we're going to have to check out some more areas in this little visitor guide right here because mom has already spotted something that she wants to do. And that is go see the horses in Aiken. Now that will not be today and it will not be tomorrow, but it will be sometime in the future. So as you can see, she's hightailing it again. She has already left me once again. I'm just in here rambling to myself once again. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching. And if you ever do get a chance, please come visit this park because it is 
one of the most beautiful places in South Carolina. Anyway, bye!